Hello, my name is Carrie Eastman, and I am the author of The Energetic Goat, and I also raise a heritage breed of goat called Fainting Goats, or Myotonic Goats, here on Baraka Heritage Farm. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about transitioning goats from a diet with chemicals and GMOs to a chemical-free diet. There is a bit of an art and a science both to this process, and I'd like to discuss that in more detail based upon my book excerpt. So let's talk a little bit about the first month, month one. Let's assume that you've um, already been feeding your goats a non-organic commercial feed, your typical standard commercial feed. Um, they will usually have various additives in them, uh, GMO grains. There's a possibility that the grain may have been sprayed. So our first step is going to be making the food transition uh, and we're talking about both feed and hay. So this is about a two week process. You want to keep your total weight of the concentrate and the concentrate refers to the grain. You want to keep the total weight the same. And what you're going to do is slowly start blending in your, your uh, organic uh, non-GMO concentrate, blend that into your commercial mix increasing the amount in the blend over a two week period. You want to do this gradually so that you don't shock the goat system. And I also very strongly encourage you to support the goat with a good quality prebiotic. And I'll put a little side note in here. If you don't know a lot about prebiotics and probiotics, there is a post discussing this in greater depth on my blog. Um, at kerryeastman.com and you can also read about prebiotics in the book The Energetic Goat. Uh, it's very important to choose a prebiotic as opposed to a probiotic and you should be giving this with every concentrate meal uh, and if you only feed a concentrate once a day you may want to also give additional prebiotic on a treat uh, about 12 hours apart from that concentrate meal to make sure they're getting plenty of gut support during this transitioning process. Also, I want to point out that uh, generally speaking, you feed grain for energy and you feed fat for weight gain. And then uh, alfalfa and soy are typically done for muscle and top line and protein both uh, because of their amino acid profile. So when you're choosing your natural feed to transition your goats over to, uh, keep in mind, are you feeding for energy? Are you feeding for weight gain or weight maintenance? Or are you looking to increase protein um, and build a top line, which is muscling along the spine from the shoulders to the tail? So uh, that's going to dictate what type of a blend that you use. And generally speaking, the best diet for a goat is still going to be as close to what nature intended as possible, which is a variety of browse, uh, forage, uh, grazing on healthy soil, because healthy soil builds healthy plants. So as much as possible, you want to depend on your browse and your graze, and then adding in a good quality hay, and then only add as little concentrate as possible to achieve the goals that you have for those particular goats. So that would be month one. You're just worrying about getting them transitioned over to their non-GMO chemical-free diet with a good prebiotic support. Now let's talk about months two through five of transitioning your goats. You've made the transition in their forage and in their concentrates. Now we have to look at two different things. We have to look at rebuilding their mineral reserves if they are depleted in minerals. And most goats on a commercial diet will have some mineral deficiencies. And then secondly, we need to be looking at doing a full body cleanse, also called a detoxification, or um, often we just refer to it as a detox. So you're going to be looking at both of these uh, over months two through five 
Now, the question becomes which one you do first, because your body generally does not clean house and rebuild at the same time. So you're going to have to pick one or the other. If you're comfortable with muscle testing, which is discussed in the book, The Energetic Goat, then you can muscle test and ask which one you should start with. If you're not comfortable with the muscle testing yet, let's talk about it logically. Generally speaking, if you have a very fragile goat, um, a goat that you know uh, is very young, very old, um, very demineralized, maybe has been wrestling with a lot of health issues, your, a detox may be too harsh for that goat. They may not be able to withstand the process. So you're going to start by rebuilding the goat's mineral reserves, building a good baseline of health before you go into the cleansing phase. On the other hand, if you have a goat that isn't super fragile and you suspect that there's been a very high level of exposure to toxins, you may choose to start with your detoxification process. Either way, you're going to do both eventually. You just have to pick which of those two paths to head off on first. So if you're going to do the detox first, let's talk about that. The most gentle and conservative detox is simply using Montmorillonite clay. Uh, people also call it green clay. Um, and this is a very, very gentle way of detoxification. And it generally works mainly in the digestive tract in the gut. Um, the other thing that you can do is look at the possibility of heavy metal exposure. Um, heavy metals can come from the soil, it can come from rainfall, and it can also be uh, as an additive in the vaccines, or they may have been in the feed. So to get at the heavy metals, you have to address what's in the gut, but then you also have to address what's built up in the body, and particularly in the brain, there are only certain things that can cross that blood-brain barrier to remove the heavy metals from the brain. Mercury is a particular culprit in um, brain uh, buildup of heavy metals. So uh, to get at the built up heavy metals that are within the body and especially in the brain, uh, the two best options that I've seen are chlorella and then a micronized form of zeolite. Uh, zeolite is a mineral. It has a structure like a cage and it attracts toxins. For zeolite to be effective, it has to be micronized, meaning it has to be uh, broken down to a very small particle size. And this is discussed in more detail in the book. But you need a small size zeolite and it also needs to be cleaned because if it's already been exposed to toxins, it will have grabbed onto them and filled up its cage and it doesn't have room to take on more from your goat's body. So you want a cleaned micronized zeolite. That or chlorella are an excellent way to address the heavy metals. Uh, if you want a slightly stronger detox, you can move to an herbal detox formula. And there are many master herbalists that have good herbal uh, detox blends. And this is discussed in the book. And there's actually a table in the back of the book that lists some options for these detox products. So your goat goes through the detox and typically that's about a 28 day process. Once that's done, you're going to switch gears and you're going to go into the rebuilding phase. And the rebuilding phase is when we start putting minerals back into the body. And we're not talking about just any kind of mineral, we're talking about minim minerals in uh, an absorbable form that's also easy for the body to excrete. This is very important because you don't want those minerals to build up in the body and start creating problems. Uh, and additionally, these absorbable minerals, which are usually uh, chelated minerals, either chelated naturally by a plant in the form of an herb or uh, chelated in a laboratory, uh, and those would be the amino acid chelates. Uh, chelates have this wonderful property that they also catalyze excretion and utilization. So if you have a goat that already has a buildup of these non-usable minerals, adding the chelated minerals into their diet will often help them dump that extra mineral load that they don't need and provide them with the minerals that they can absorb and use correctly. So uh, this rebuilding process takes about four months to really start to rebuild your mineral foundation. And that's why we say that this phase of transitioning takes about uh, month two to month two to month five. It's about, uh, about a four month process. 
Uh, and one really important thing to note here, and that is that when a goat is going through a detox, the detox can mimic uh, the symptoms of having a heavy parasite load. A goat going through a detox may have diarrhea, may have a runny nose, uh, may have runny eyes, there may be skin eruptions, there could be weight loss, there could be hair loss. Um, so these are all possible things that the body will do to dump toxins. Uh, and often when you start the mineral rebuilding phase, you may naturally trigger the goat into a detox process as well. So be aware that those symptoms can appear and they can mimic parasite symptoms. So if that happens, don't immediately assume it's parasites and treat for a parasite issue. Run a fecal check, muscle test, make sure that you know what you're dealing with. Now, if you see those symptoms and you also see a fever, you see anemia, or you see yellow or green uh, nasal discharge, or you have bloody diarrhea, then you're likely not dealing with a detox. And uh, in all good conscience, I have to say at that point, call your veterinarian because we can't diagnose, treat, or prescribe. Okay, now we're moving into months six through 12. At this point, your goats have made the transition in their feed and their hay, they've gone through a detoxification, and you've also spent several months rebuilding their nutritional reserves using a high quality supplement program. Uh, and generally speaking, four months is about the amount of time it takes for the blood in the body to completely turn over and be replaced with brand new blood. Um, also, uh, two years is a key milestone. Around two years is typically when you reach full optimum health. Um, all the bone in the body has been replaced with fresh bone in addition to the other changes that occur. So, during months six through 12, we're going to take a look at your chemical deworming program. Up until now, we've basically just set that aside and said let's focus on detox and rebuilding we don't want to try to deal with too many issues at once but now we're at a good point to say okay let's look at your chemicals now hopefully what's been happening is that as you've gone through your detoxification as you've gone through the rebuilding process your ghosts should have been needing fewer and fewer chemical interventions for parasites so you should be seeing some progress already hopefully you're not deworming by the calendar hopefully you're only deworming on an as-needed basis this is really important because we want their immune system, we want their body to kick in and start dealing with the parasites on its own, and then we only step in as needed. So during this time period, as you see that your goats need some help with a parasite overload, you're going to test some of your non-chemical options first, and then only reach for the chemical if you need it. And generally speaking, with either the non-chemical or the chemical, you're going to be starting with the mildest and working up to the most extreme. So you always test your mildest option, your simplest option first, and then increase as needed. So some of the things you may be looking at are diatomaceous earth, clay, uh, pumpkin seeds, pine needles, lespedeza, trefoil, chicory, uh, and then there's many, many commercially available herbal blends, or you can learn to make them yourself. This is all addressed in much greater detail in the book, so I highly encourage you to take a look at the book if you haven't already, and look at the reference section in the back of the book that actually gives some herbal recommendations from several well-known uh, herbal resellers. So at this point, you're going to muscle test determine which of the non-herbal remedies would address the parasite overload, and then use it. And then test your goat again, either muscle testing or have a fecal uh, examination done. Check to see, did it address the parasite load? If it didn't, then go for either um, something stronger from the non-chemical uh, option list, or switch to one of the mildest chemicals. And again, there's a list in the book ranking the chemicals from mildest to most severe and you're going to want to start at the mild end of that spectrum so over this six to twelve month period you should be checking for parasite overload address it with a non-chemical option if you can 
if not reach for the chemical and then detox after and you should be seeing that overall they're needing the intervention less and less often if they are still needing just as much intervention then you need to look at your overall program look at your zinc look at your copper look at how you're feeding your hay is it in a feeder on the ground look at your browsing and grazing management program and there are many more things that you can examine and that's all laid out in detail in the book so that's it for months 6 through 12 addressing the chemical dewormers and now we're going to move into months 13 through 48 and that is the time as you're starting to transition into overall maintenance We're talking now about months 13 through 48. These aren't quite what I would call the maintenance period yet because remember the bones are still being replaced uh, and that's about a two-year process. However, during 13 through 48 you're starting to kind of settle into a rhythm here. You're continuing to revisit all the previous steps. You're continuing the healthy diet. You're increasing or decreasing the concentrates as you need to. Uh, you're continuing to refine your supplement program, um, adding or subtracting uh, from your mineral buffet or to your mineral buffet to keep the goats balanced and continuing to rebuild their mineral reserves. You're continuing to look at your parasite control program. Uh, you're running fecal tests or your muscle testing and hopefully, if you're doing this right, you're becoming less and less dependent on the chemicals and you're able to stay ahead of the parasites with simple management practices and with um, herbal remedies and the clay and the diatomaceous earth. Uh, generally speaking, this should be the trend. You should be moving forward in a positive direction of the goats being healthier, better weight, overall better coat, um, better color of the membranes, uh, less dependence on the chemicals. If you're not seeing that happening, you need to go back to the basics, revisit the basics. And this is addressed in a lot more depth in the book and in my blog. And there's also a group on Facebook, a free group called Common Sense Holistic Goats. And I would encourage you to join that group because we can help you troubleshoot what's going on with your herd. Uh, and I'm also available for private consultations. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of a primer about how we go about transitioning the goats onto this chemical-free lifestyle. Uh, and oh, one other point to mention, and that is, is that as your goats breed and you go on through the generations, each successive generation should have a greater degree of health, a greater natural degree of parasite resistance, a greater adaptation to uh, a lower concentrate input uh, and, a gr and a higher ability to use a good quality browse or forage to maintain. So over the generations, you should also be seeing these type of improvements. And if you're not, then again, you need to go back and look at your foundation. So thank you very much for your time today. And I look forward to working with you in the future. Have a great day.